Hello, welcome to the photo show. Yes, it's me, Ewan. I'm here. Professional photographer here in Birmingham. Uh, uh, we're going to go through the week's photography news, the last couple of weeks actually. Sorry we missed out on shows last week. Um, I missed out on all the shows unfortunately because of work and, and uh, just having loads and loads of stuff to do. So um, uh, let's get on with it. So the news, well let's always start with the Fantasy Photo League, that's well worth doing because we've had a great month, we've had some fantastic entries for February, um, we, we, we've grown in numbers, we've had uh, we've nearly doubled actually in size with numbers of people that have come on, the, uh, on to join us in the Fantasy Photo League. Uh, it's been absolutely great. The, the standards have really, really improved. Um, it was a really tough topic last month, but I think a lot of people will get tons from that because it'll help them with deciding what to shoot for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the topics going forwards. March's topic is construct, 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 however you want to phrase it, it's up to you. Um, C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T. -T. Um, it is your job to shoot an image that you think fulfills that brief. It's deliberately wide open so you can get as creative as you like and send it through. BritishTechNetwork at gmail.com if you want to join in. It's better off if you're in the Slack room, so send us an invitation request to that address for the Slack room and we'll get you in on there as well as. Um, and uh, lots of people have scored lots of points this year, this month, so um, well done to those people. Right, first things first then. Uh, are you into your film photography? I wasn't, I hated it. <laughs> I've got to be the first one to admit that I was a bit crap in a dark room. I couldn't stand it, I didn't like the chemicals, I wasn't very good at it, and my dark room skills are non-existent, so I don't miss it in the slightest. But if you do, then good for you, because uh, these people, Labbox, have come up with a process um, uh, and equipment which you can use yourself. And you're thinking, well, okay, but I've got a little dark, I would love a dark room at home, but I haven't got enough room. Well, the idea of this is that you don't need a dark room as such. All you've got to do is buy their little kit. It's a Kickstarter project, and you will get the basic set, which is a 35mm um, uh, bath, so that you can process your 35mm film. And then you can buy the uh, medium format, um, which gives you the ability to do 120. So um, you're absolutely laughing here. Uh, colour or black and white, it's entirely up to you. You can do it and that's it. You're off and running. Uh, it's a simple process. There's Vimeo videos on how to go about using it. Um, you've got to buy the chemicals that you want. So any chemicals you've got lying around from when you used to have a dark room or that kind of stuff, provided they still work, uh, will be there. Um, if you've got some old Kodachrome um, uh, chemicals left over and you've got some film, best of luck. Uh, you get everything that you need, absolutely everything that you need to process all your old films at home. Wonderful. Uh, there's the stuff working. Actually, the, the, the guy that shot the picture of this is a little bit of a sado because um, uh, there is absolutely tons and tons of pictures of the uh, of the bath unit and the uh, the spooling units. Um, uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> He obviously really liked it, shall we say. Um, they said, the wonderful thing about it is you can develop your films wherever you want. And they've got a bit of the video, and I'm serious here. There's a woman who pulls this out of her handbag, sticks it on the table, and takes the film out of the camera and processes the film right there in the restaurant, on the table. Because that's the kind of thing you would do, isn't it? <laughs> you need a Polaroid when you're that instant. Um, uh, as I say, you can do colour or black and white. If you're an analogue nerd and you love all of that stuff, then this is your wet dream. Um, do it wherever you like, back at home. Uh, do it in the privacy of your own home, obviously, and uh, not in sight of children. But uh, there you go. It's wonderful. Uh, if you're into it, I guess you're into it, and that's the end of it. So This is Vicky. Vicky has a wonderful looking bottom, a fantastic pair of breasts, but her brain doesn't appear to be equal to them. No. Um, she is a Russian model who decided one day it would be absolutely fantastic if she hung out the top of a building, the Canyon Tower in Dubai, and it's a long, long, long way up. Um, she did it as a publicity stunt. She's an attention-seeking lady. She gave no thought to anyone that was gonna be injured if she fell. Um, there's boats and stuff below there. She's thinking, well, there's water below, I'll be fine. No mate's gonna be like hitting concrete from that distance. And uh, she relied on a mate of hers just holding her up. Uh, there you go. Uh, 
No thought for anyone except herself and her own personal exposure. You're what's wrong with the world, mate. You really are. Um, Russians doing this kind of thing at height seems to be a bit of a thing. I don't know why they um, they feel that, that there's a fascination with it. Something in the in the Russian psyche, maybe. I don't know. Um, there's kids falling off buildings all over the place trying to emulate this kind of stuff. The last thing the internet needed was that. I thought about not putting it on at all, but then I did think to myself, I'm sorry, but... Um, you need to be, if my son or daughter came back and said that they'd done something like this, they would be chained in the house. I cannot tell you how much that pisses me off. Nikon has suffered what they're quoted as extraordinary losses. Um, uh, now you want to quantify extraordinary losses, they're saying extraordinary losses, is uh, extraordinary losses come to $263 million. You know, blimey, well, Canon, uh, Nikon are pretty big, so you know they can cope with that, surely. Apparently, that's not the, the sum of it. The lithography business and semiconductor businesses, which have had an equally bad time of it, have also lost, uh, now, given that if you, if you add it all together, the total losses come to $465 million. They're not in a good shape. Um, what are they going to do about it? Well, the company has said there's going to be company-wide restructuring. That's the quote. Um, if you work for Nikon, uh, I'm awfully sorry. I think you're in for a tough old time of it coming up in the next few weeks. Um, they've gone so far into the red that they are cancelling a brand new line of cameras. So the thing that they would probably expect to get them out of a financial hole, they don't even have enough money to keep that going. So um, that would be sad if Nikon went under. It really would because, you know, it, as a Canon shooter, I never missed the opportunity to kick Nikon. And as... Nikon never missed the opportunity to kick Canon shooters, but that's what we need. We need that. It's like taking the mickey out of the Scottish at rugby and them taking the mickey out of us. You've got to do it. You can't not do it, otherwise life might is just not worth living. So I would donate money to Nikon just so that they survive. I'm going to buy a Nikon camera this afternoon just to try and help keep my float. Okay, steady on. I lied there. I lied. Uh... Adox. Now, you, the thing is, I've started to think we need to do an analog section, uh, but I'm not really qualified for it. Um, uh, but Adox are a firm in Switzerland. They're in Mali in Switzerland, and they've just bought a whole pile of land, and it's not cheap to buy land in Switzerland. I know that for a fact, because uh, we had a couple of friends who lived out there. Um, but they've got this new space, and they've extended their plant, and they're going to put in a brand new emulsifying machine. They make film, chemicals, and papers for the uh, analog lithography and... Uh, uh, Lumo business and they're on the expanse it's coming back it's coming back if you're if, if you're not shooting film you're clearly a dinosaur <laughs> just like me uh, Microsoft have decided to solve the drone flying around the neighborhood problem by creating a drone simulator. Uh, you can get this thing by going over to Microsoft and, and searching for it, but it is basically a drone simulator that lets you pick up and fly the thing. Now, I don't know whether it's keyboard controls only or whether it's one of those shebang things where you can get the USB cable that actually links your full drone remote, uh, uh, the normal remote control device into it or not. Um, uh, I can't get a word on price. I can't find anywhere to download it. I don't know if it's available in Mac or just Windows. I'm guessing it's going to be just Windows. But you can fly this thing around your neighborhood and... Lovely. There you go. If you want to get it, go get it. Time for the gear. Uh, Sigma have released a whole pile of lenses. Um, there's a whole raft of stuff that's come out. Um, you've got the 14mm f1.8 art lens, the 135mm f1.8 art lens, the 24 to 70 f2.8 art lens, and also there's a 100 to 400 that they've called their light bazooka. Um, that's the big tall one that's sat up in the end there. So uh, first things first, the 14mm features the largest glass mold that there is. 80 millimeters in the industry, contributing to less fare, ghosting, and distortion. The 135, um, and I think I've shown the wrong one there, that's the 24 to 70. I knew this was good. Oh, 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 come on. I've got them out of order. There we go. The one, I can edit, don't worry. The 135 has a new focus motor, which gives, apparently, according to their press release, increased torque and overall performance with addition of focus limiter, which sounds rather interesting. 
I've got to go back now, I can edit again. Uh, 24 to 70 features a metal barrel for durability and an internal material for less variation in thermal expansion and contraction, secret material clearly. Um, a new OS as well and a thicker center glass that provides an amazing bocker, unquote. Jolly good. Uh, this is the big beast. This is the uh, 70 to 400, uh, the 100 to 400. Um, it does look rather good, actually. The reviews that I've read of it say that it's quite good. That picture doesn't show so much. Well done, chaps. Have a black camera and a black lens and shoot it against the black background just for effect. It's not art. I want to see what I'm buying, thank you very much. Hang something else in the Tate. Um, but it does look like a fantastic lens. Um, and uh, Sigma have got a great reputation now. They're making really, really good stuff. Um, prices, there's no prices. Mm, that's the bit that worries me. Um, lenses are going up in general. Lenses in the UK have gone stupid because of Brexit and all the currency exchange rates. And then you've got the Fukushima -y type, not uh, not the Fukushima because that was the nuclear thing, but the uh, the earthquake stuff going on out in the Far East. Um, so, it's going to be a lot cheaper than the Canon L series, for sure, but um, if you look on WEX at the moment, there's quite a few of these lenses that are actually creeping their way up to be nearly Canon prices, so um, uh, keep an eye out because uh, it, it, it might, might be the best thing that you've ever had. Snapchat specs are now available. <laughs> I thought this was a serious camera show, Ian. No, maybe not. Um, it was announced last September. It's now available through vending machines, as you know, but you can now buy them online. It's $130 a pair. Um, you can only order a maximum of six pairs per household. I think that's going to satisfy the need, don't worry. Uh, they're camera sunglasses. Uh, they're integrated camera, video camera, with one of the smallest wireless video cameras that are out in the world. Um, a single charge should give you a day worth of, of shooting snaps, which is absolutely brilliant. It looks like there's a little ring flash next to it as well on the other side, which should be pretty cool. It does connect directly to Snapchat using a, a Bluetooth link or Wi-Fi link and using your phone as well as. Uh, it shoots a circular video format. Yeah, I'll need to have a look at that because I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the devices will play on, uh, the, sorry, the videos will play on any device, but the orientation is limited to those with a 115 degree field of view. Lovely. Yongnu are a company that you should know about if you don't. They make some great cheap lenses. I've got the 35mm lens of theirs, and uh, it's very, very good. It's extremely good. Um, they've come out with a clone of the 85mm Canon lens. It's uh, f1.8. Um, it looks good. Uh, I mean, the, the Canon lens isn't particularly expensive. It only runs in at just over £100. Um, so, uh, sorry. The, the, the 50 mil runs at just over 100 pounds. This one is a lot more. Uh, it's up at the 250 pound mark. Um, this thing is going to come in at 177 dollars or uh, around that amount, and it's going to be 200 dollars cheaper than the current Canon equivalent lens. That'd be a nice little portrait lens to have if you want it in a little tiny small studio or something like that. It'd be great for taking out on days out, um, for, for shooting stuff like wildlife or you know a reasonable distance or, or shooting the family in a setting where you'd want uh, some of the far distance in. I, I, it's great. It's good. The 35mm f2 is also good and there is a 50mm f1.8 mm that I got confused with. So um, uh, go out and get it. it. It looks excellent and the ones that I've got, like I say, I've got the 35mm and it, it works really, really well. Sony have released the world's fastest SD card. Um, so uh, why? Well, uh, this is the FFG series card from uh, Sony. Um, it reads at speeds of up to 300 megabits per second and writes at 299 megabits per second. Um, it, it, Sony is saying that it's not just the physical properties of the ability to write quickly, it's saying that if you shoot long bursts of high resolution images or you're recording video, um, uh, they've got a new algorithm that's built into it that prevents loss of the speed in writing the data and also um, it, it stops you then getting that lag after you've done repeated burst mode shoots. Uh, I, I, I read that and I thought to myself, well that's a great idea, but then there's a little bit sat and thought, but surely, actually, one of the things that limits your burst mode is the processor in your camera. If the processor in the camera's not up to it, doesn't matter how much you chuck at the SD card. Yes, okay, predominantly at the moment, at 90 megabits a second, the SD card is what's crapping out probably at about the same time as your processor, maybe a little bit 
uh, before. Um, I just uh, depending on the camera that you got. If you've got a camera that really shoots massive burst modes, this would then probably be a real bonus, no question. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Jury's out. Uh, there's three different versions of it: uh, 32 meg, 64 gig, and 134 gig. Sorry, 64 gig and 128 gig. Um, no pricing yet, and it'll be available uh, in April. Um, sorry, the card's available in March, and a reader for it's available in April. So you're going to have issues with getting this off as well as you might need to buy a specialised reader. So, oh, that'd be interesting. Uh, I won't use it because I don't shoot anything that needs that kind of level. Uh, Sony. Do you remember last month we talked about the Sony lens that did a, an incredible 960 frames a second? Um, well, uh, they've actually stuck that, as they threatened, into a camera uh, on a phone. Uh, at Mobile World Congress last week, they announced that they were sticking it in. It is a 5.5 inch 4K display camera, uh, phone rather. It's got a 19 megapixel rear camera at F2, and uh, it's got uh, 20, uh, 2100 uh, at 30 frames a second and 9600 at 720. Sorry, I'll do that again. It's got uh, 2100p at 30 frames a second and it's got 720p if you want to shoot the 960 frames a second. And that's what bothered me actually a little bit because I, I want to see what the 1080 setting is because the 1080 setting, if that's at sort of the 180 mark or even at uh, 250 or something like that at frames per second, then that would be really, really cool. Um, uh, it's got a 13 megapixel front camera as well, which seems a bit of overkill. Um, it'll be out in late spring and there's no prices available as yet. Yeah. Jury's out. Will I be going away from the iPhone 4 and Android with the running that? No, uh, oh, I might. I might. If it's a really cracking camera, I might. But um, at the moment, I'm not convinced. The 720p thing pissed me off because that didn't give that impression last week when I read the story. Never mind. Time for your questions. Sorry if you feel like we're rattling through it a little bit this week, but um, we've had problems starting the computer up and I've got to get this done because I didn't leave to start late until the Mac show's coming up. But um, uh, we've got the highlights. We'll do another one next week, don't worry. Uh, first question then comes from Callum, and it's not even for me. Um, hi Ewan and Ian, sorry to miss you out Ewan, but this one is about landscapes. Uh, the question on the last week's show, there was an answer from Ian. Um, I love doing landscapes, but wouldn't dream of suggesting I know what to do. I've got a lot of information from the answer on last week's show, but I was wondering, would you advise with re what would you advise with regard to skies? A, shooting landscapes with a range of ND filters, neutral density. Uh, B, shooting with a single neutral density and then correcting in Photoshop or C, relying on a bracketing process and correcting in Photoshop afterwards with a more HDR-like process. I'm not a rich man, so B and C are by far more appealing, but willing to spend on equipment if there are moves forward to be made. Regards, Callum. Uh, Ian's done the pry because Callum doesn't want me. Uh, good news. Uh, is you don't need to spend any much money on the equipment if you don't want to. Filters are great if you want to come out of the camera approach and minimal post editing, but they have their drawbacks. Uh, combining combing filters and combing filters and less very high quality uh, filters can result in color casting. For example, you may want a neutral density to smooth out water and and graduated filter to maintain the sky. If you have a subject building, tree, etc., which protrudes above the horizon into the skyline, a neutral density graduated filter will clip this area and affect the exposure. If I were to use a single filter, it would be a neutral density graduated filter to correct exposure for the sky. I'd always expose for my foreground to be exposed correctly, uh, and then pull down a neutral density graduated filter to reduce and hold back the bright skies to balance the exposure. With this approach, you'll need a variety of filters at different strengths or stops, as the intensity of light will always vary through golden hour, sunset, twilight, dawn, midday, cloudy, etc. Uh, if done correctly, very little editing actually is required and the best approach is to expose for the sky and the foreground to work out the difference in exposure between the two so that you select the correct filter. My preferred method 
however, is bracketing. And there are a couple of ways. In the, the in-camera bracketing, so choosing auto exposure bracketing for typically three shots. Some cameras do five, seven, or more. But essentially, you want two shots, one for foreground, one for sky, depending on the scene you may need to go with. And then one stop of exposure difference between the bracketed shots. I use live view to expose for the mid-tone and the scene, something not too bright or not too dark. This will be my camera's zero EV value. Uh, shots and shots either side of this will be minus one, minus two, and plus one, plus two, etc., depending on the settings. Expose a shot for the foreground, then a shot for the sky gives you more control, but by changing settings, you risk slightly moving the camera. So on blending the images, you will have to make sure your images are aligned. Um, I'd rarely use HDR software as the results, in my, in my opinion, are not natural. I find the best way to blend your final exposures uh, is a couple of ways, simply using a layer mask or um, a luminosity mask. Both require some time and a level of Photoshop knowledge, but given the results, in my opinion, I've, uh, but give you the results, in my opinion, I've included a link to a good tutorial on how to do it. And you think, oh, where's the link? Well, it's okay if you go to the um, uh, entry for this show on BritishTechNetwork.com, click on the show. In the uh, script there that describes what's in the show, there is a link to some show notes. The only show on the network that has show notes. And you'll know all the stories that we did, and you'll see all the pictures that we did, and you'll get all the links that we wrote down. There you go. So I hope that answers your question, Callum, because um, uh, if not, just talk to Ian direct. I'm not going to be a messenger. I'm not taking, do you want to go out with him or something? Yeah. Question two is from Mike. He says, it's coming up to cricket season, and this is the first year that I've not played in a very long time. Bad luck, mate. I gave up years ago. Best thing I ever did, my knees are, anyway. Sadly, the old bones aren't what they used to be, but I'm determined to still be around my local cricket club and want to take more pictures of the team. What would you suggest? Is A, the best lens to buy for my Canon 80D, B, what settings should I consider? I'm glad to say I'm uh, well beyond using auto and sports, but I'd like some better ideas for varying the shots. And C, is this one of those raw versus JBEG moments that you love so much, Ewan? Uh, shoot raw, because um, you're out there and you want to get the best shots, and you're not going to you're going to snap away and take a couple of hundred shots maybe during a game, but that's only going to boil down into about 30 or 40 images maybe at the end of that at best. So uh, don't be afraid of, jet, of raw. Um, don't batch process your raws because otherwise you might as well just shot in JPEG. It's rubbish. Best lens to buy. Uh, so I've got two lenses that I would have kept and used for sport if I ever shot any, which I don't anymore. Um, uh, I've got a 70-200 2.8, and that's really, really good, especially if you're getting someone who's running towards you on the boundary and you want to get them picking the ball up, turning around and throwing it back with the batsman in the background. The 2.8 works really, really well, would knock the background out quite softly, so it's not massively different. You'll still see that they're cricketers in there. Um, and that works really good. At, 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 if you're shooting them out on the wicket though, then 2.8 or 4 isn't going to make any difference. So save your money, uh, don't get a 2.8 lens if you want to do for distance, and uh, have a, a lens that's sat permanently on a tripod, and then you can twist your camera on and off between the, um, the sports lens and the, uh, and the set lens at say 400, something like that. And you can get 400 for under a thousand pounds. Get a, an F5 Canon for, for um, from Wex for under a thousand pounds for that. Um, really, really good lens. I've got a 400 here, F5, and it, it's really, really cracking and sharp. And I used to use it for rugby, um, but it's, uh, and that was all, you know always winter, so it was glum days and that kind of stuff. I went up to 800 ISO. I still got good results. I still got decent speeds so that I'm not uh, blurring too much. Um, so that'll do you fine in the summer, no question at all. Uh, what settings to have? If you're feeling brave, go for manual um, and, and, and have a mess at that. Um, use your live view to see what exposures you're getting roughly and then you can always correct afterwards. Um, think about anything under 125, you're probably gonna get some blur on it, uh, 125th of a second. Uh, 250th of a second and above, you're probably gonna then start getting more static shots. Um, and over 500th of a second, you're definitely gonna get everything standing still. Um, so think about uh, maybe shooting on a shutter priority if you want to introduce blur or remove blur, um, but failing that, um, stick on aperture priority, um, or just go to full manual, because then you can keep your uh, lowest aperture priority setting there, and you can have a, a good mess around with the, the shutter speeds. Uh, your choice entirely, mate. Uh, uh, I hope that's helped. If you've got any further questions, send them in.
Uh, last question. I've put links, by the way, to all of those lenses that I've just mentioned. Tamron do one, which is, you know, you're going to save an awful lot of money. If you're going to get the uh, 2.870 to 210 uh, to 200 Canon, then you're talking about 13 to 1500 quid, depending on which version you buy. Um, uh, maybe a bit more. Um, Tamron do one of those and it's under a thousand pounds. So you'll save yourself a good few quid and it, it'll probably be good enough. You, know, you won't notice a real difference. Uh, hi Ewan, this is from Steve. Hi Ewan, my daughter's just decided to do media and photography in her options at secondary school. Of course, that's this work. I need to remind Ellis. Um, we've got some basic camera equipment and Santa may bring a little more. 13 and still believes in Santa, wow. Um, but she could do, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she doesn't hear that, just in case she does. Um, uh, but she could do with a bag right now. Do you have suggestions for a kit bag that is pretty good but won't break the bank? And it was interesting because I started to answer this one and thought about it and was trolling through Amazon, which um, uh, was never good when I'm looking for camera bags because I do have a problem with them. And I'm sure you've written this in deliberately just because of that fact. Um, but Jake was with me and Jake said, oh, you want the Amazon basics? He said, I've got that, it's brilliant, perfect. Just exactly what she'd need. And I clicked on it and actually it's not bad. It doesn't show you any pictures of the inside but Jake's described it to me and it's everything you'd expect. It's got the ability to fold the, the, the top two guides out so that you can do a T piece you know, with a long lens, body and lens all in the centre console of it and then there's two lenses, uh, lens pockets there on the sides. There's room at the back for a laptop. Um, he said it's really, really good. So there you go. Recommender from, re recommendation from Jake is just buy the Amazon Basics backpack for it. It will do just fine. Um, $28.99 as well. So that's not bad at all. Uh, sorry about me f messages going off. I did switch them off before we started. Bugger. How do you enter the Fantasy Photo League? Dead simple. Uh, send us an email to britishtechnetwork at gmail.com. Get out there, get shooting. Construct is this month's topic. I've got to run because in 10 minutes I'm doing the Mac show because I've left it a bit late to do the photo show. But we'll be back next week and we'll do it because this was some of last week's news. You don't worry about that anyway. So we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks for listening.